Hello, everyone. Welcome to Playframe and the Battle of the Dan's conclusion. It's time for that old tradition where we stop battling and actually like work together for a change. Yeah, we've we were contacted by OSHA, and it turns out that uh, the Battle of the Dan's caused a lot of chaos, and now we have to clean the arena. It's community service. It's community service, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a good way of putting it. There was a lot of destruction in rounds alone. Yeah. Not to mention all the other games. So we're doing our time. Yeah, this this is the site of uh, Battle of the Dance 2023, and we have to clean it up now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so yeah, as is tradition in this Battle of the Dance thing we've been doing for a while, we do always conclude the battles with a cooldown game, something cooperative. And uh, yeah, this is this is like the part of the... Uh, of the sports match where you like go shake the hands of the other teams. Yeah. Um, and like some of us are salty, but really it's it's not the time and the place for that. It's uh it's time for sportsmanship. Absolutely. And then um I was thinking that maybe we could do a uh a little compliment circle. Ooh. And we could take turns and that uh we could talk about each other's performance in Battle of the Dance. Oh, I like this. Okay. Yeah, so I, I will I will start. Uh, Floyd, I was very impressed with your uh, ability in Mario Party to uh, appre to approach a game you had never seen before and dunk on us in a way that we didn't expect. <laughs> Thank you. So nice to hear that complimented here i'll I'll, pa I'll pay it forward here then i'll, pa I'll pass it along uh let's see which moment of jones performance do i want to compliment though mm. i have to remember everything we played yeah yeah, yeah just that's to get back through it step one mm. so the first game was our first game was stick fight which seems so long ago now yeah, that one was good. I did get destroyed in that one. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tricky Tower came after. Oh, yeah, Tricky Towers. Yeah, Tricky Tower. Jones actually did really, really well on that one. Uh, I do remember being only mildly salty <laughs> um, about that. Only mildly, of course. Of course. Jones, I actually, I, it's obvious now that I think a little longer about it. Jones, I want to compliment you on what is still the maybe the happiest I've been in defeat, seeing you pull off that incredible homing shot in Worms and yep. taking out Mr. Fit <laughs> uh, at long range, incredible odds. Felt great to see. I was I was pleased to be present to witness it. Well, it was a, it was a it was a pleasure putting Mr. Fit in his place. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Emmons. I think I think in a lot of the games um, there there was like a, a bit of an underdog situation and you, you you came back from behind almost in like so many games and I feel like I feel like you you, you had a sweep this this battle of the dance I don't know I, I feel like this so so a little inside baseball for the play friends we're recording this session along with rounds and worms mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like I did I did well today. I I feel like this was my day, but the previous ones I feel like were were uh, were were kind of kind of a uh, if I may say if I may say so and and you know I, I apologize for this. Uh, Floyd is usually concerned about running a really good show and less about his performance in the game. Guilty. Uh, but I feel like this was this was the best Floyd showing we may have ever seen. Oh. It is a very good, very good showing. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to we'll have to go to the the comments for the scores, which, despite our best efforts, people still keep track of, uh, <laughs> to see actually who is the the winner of this and uh, the winner of, of course, Dan Supremacy uh, for of the course. next year or until we do another one of these things. Uh, but you, you mentioning Dan Supremacy just reminded me of a thing before I forget, and then we'll get back to our compliment circle. Okay. Um, so so we here we encounter a especially since we started doing this Battle of the Dance thing, the three of us have encountered a lot of punnery around our name and, and uh, done a lot of punnery around our shared name. Um, so, like, at this point, I feel like the, the three of us have heard most of the Dan name jokes that have happened. But I, 
encountered a new one that I don't think I'd ever heard in, well, not really the wild. Soraya came up with it, and I just was, like, dumbfounded for a second because I was just had the thought of, like, I've, I don't think I've ever heard anyone do that one before. Um, I... She basically like made an equivalent to the joke of you've achieved the highest Dan rank. I had never ever thought to use like the first Don, second Don, third Don, like mm -hmm. martial arts ranking thing as a, <laughs> at, at, like as a Dan joke. I can't believe I never had that thought before. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. I wonder if I wonder if the answer here is like your performance in the battle Dan adds adds to your Dan rank. Like it's not a winner take all situation. Ooh. But like like Jones, Jones for example, I, I think we would all agree is probably like the lifetime winner of the most Battle of the Dance rounds. He's the game. I think so. Dan. Like we we know we know this for sure. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I do. don't know about that. I've watched the tapes. <laughs> uh, I've also I was there for all of them. Uh, and so like Dan's Dan rank or Don rank if. I, uh, uh, that room, I, I don't like being called. I, I got too many Dons because I draw my A's very similar to O's with like a very tiny tail. So a lot of people call me Don. Understandable. Um, we can call it Dan rank. I like it. But yeah, the Dan rank. So Jones's Dan rank may be like highest, but that's, you know, we're all on the journey together to reach the, the ultimate Dan rank. Yeah. yeah. It's a journey that never ends. You know, you, you, you start off as a baby Dan and then you, you find two other Dans and then you game with them for a long time until you know you achieve dan enlightenment yeah dan enlightenment i like that we, we've been calling this a battle for dan supremacy but ultimately we're all just aiming for like dan self-improvement yeah yeah i think that's a, that's like that's a good goal i agree i'll probably forget that and, and immediately hate on you guys next year but oh yeah oh yeah we yeah. should remember that during the next cooldown game when we do this <laughs> <laughs> carrie remind one of us why we're here next time yeah yeah in a year's time or so yeah and make sure it's not floyd because that would be too easy yeah no and also i'd forget yeah yeah we can't have that no 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 nah. remind a responsible dan choose the most responsible dan your pick it's you don't it's, have to say which one of it is floyd i do have to say <laughs> it is you like uh, <laughs> yeah 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 and like as as much as that probably like i don't know like you i would not trust myself to remember literally anything <laughs> and i will i will choose to go with the guy who opts to keep a day job most of the time and also run two youtube channels <laughs> <laughs> all right fair fair but, but counterpoint uh responsibility and um like memory retention <laughs> attention uh not necessarily equivalent so i my desire would be to remember the thing and uh deploy it my ability however as folks in comments i think can attest to remember a thing that just happened and apply it not like not a perfect track record mm. I feel like that's part that's more about doing a show than it is about your like I did streaming for a little while and you do not put your best you do not put your best foot forward vis-a-vis -vis the video game when you also have to talk the whole time about something. True, true. Some streamers seem to do it. I can't for the life of me understand how. Yeah. It's a mystery. It is a mystery. Ta talking, talking, and doing a thing not not happening for me. It's impossible. Yeah, I'm amazed. I'm cleaning a single thing right now. Yeah. While I say words, I mean that's why that's why we picked this game is because I think it's a task that we might be able to handle and talk at the same time. <laughs> so far, so good. Feels like certainly not doing it optimally. Also, because I've just barely played any of this game, but I like that even if you're just doing it slow and suboptimal, you're still making progress. Oh yeah, still making progress every every. Spray water is just like just like Dan Frank. Exactly. Every 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 worm missile that you miss, every <laughs> you know round card that you're, you 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 go for glory and fall short. It's just another step on your Dan journey. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's the most poignant thing I've ever said in my life. <laughs> Thank God we're recording. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? 
We, did we get that? Did we get that? <laughs> we get that. <laughs> I'm checking the tapes. I'm checking the tapes. I love that little knight over there that that Floyd is cleaning. This little guy. Right? I like Very him. good. He's all little... Wait, hang on. I gotta see this knight. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at him. He's look just a cute. guy. A little roly poly guy. Yeah. He's having a good time. He's so shiny now. Also, uh, just just for like the sake of if you haven't figured it out, you can just right click once and it'll keep it on, which is nice. Yeah, not having to hold the button down. Yeah, there are, there are times I like holding the button down, so you know I feel I still feel alive. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've I deal with enough RSI nonsense. Yeah, that uh, I very much appreciate being able to just click a button. I am I'm playing on a controller. Maybe I should uh. I should swap over to save my index finger from holding down this. It's worth trying. This trigger. Yeah. I usually, in a game like this, I would default to a controller as well, just since usually, like, controllers have their own issues, but, like, uh, controller use is not going to bug my, like, wrist joints, all that stuff, like, uh, like a mouse clicking and dragging and stuff like that will. But in this case, a rare. <laughs> a rare mouse and keyboard W. Mm -hmm. Yeah, controllers are very. I don't know. I, I I prefer controllers in most cases, even for like FPSs, which like I, I I attribute to like Halo being my FPS of choice. Yeah. And so it's like, well, the one the one genre where if you're gonna play it, you should really have a mouse and keyboard. Like I grew up playing on controller anyway, so. They're kind of the same way. Yeah. I I also default to controllers because in my experience it is much easier to like mouse and keyboard control tends to result in much jerkier movement around with the camera. Like as you can see, I'm like a like jerky movement like this. I won't do a lot of it, <laughs> but for the folks mm -hmm. watching, you could see that. Whereas uh, it's much easier to get smoother, softer, less jarring, potentially motion sickness causing motions with a controller in my experience for recording purposes. It makes footage look better. So that's what I've just sort of uh, settled into as a habit. Yeah, there. I feel like there's some games that I'm like, this is a controller game and I won't have it any other way. And yep. Same with the keyboard and mouse, though. Every now and then you do try to swap it up and you're like, this feels wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like, oh, let me play Monster Hunter with keyboard and mouse. And you're like, I feel dirty. No. no. Yeah, that's... Can't fathom it. The Monster Hunter police come to your house for that one. They, they do. Capcom police. As long as we're giving out compliments, Emmons, I have to... I have to applaud your ability to actually, like... Use strategy. <laughs> I feel like that that was a generous interpretation of what I do. <laughs> I'll be honest, it's a pretty low bar here on Playframe to clear. <laughs> um, <laughs> because I am, as you said, aiming to entertain, but also just uh, once we kind of get into this battle of dance mode, I'm just, um, uh, I am just sort of like the cat that's just been shown like a laser pointer or something. I'm just like, no other thoughts, just pursue the thing directly in front of me. Jones has an inherent instinct for finding the most entertaining thing. Like, whether it's the most strategically sound, finding the most entertaining thing <laughs> to do and to pursue. And, uh, but from you, I like, every now and then I can see what you're doing and be like, and have the realization like, that's a solid strategic choice. Like, you're actually making smart, intelligent choices for how to, like, actually, like, play this competitively. I could learn from you. <laughs> It's refreshing to see. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it is. I, so maybe, I feel like I'm a weirdo for doing this. Do you ever play? Y'all ever, whenever you play board games with friends, do you ever like. You're like playing for everybody to have a good time more than you're playing to win? 100% yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Because that's that like. I feel like I'm a crazy person where I'm in a board game group and everyone's like, oh, this is a strategy we're going to do to win. But it's 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 like way more fun to just try and like 
crack the code of how do I make everybody have a good time without, you know, like... A hundred percent. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes total sense. Uh, yeah, oh, totally. I totally do that. <laughs> yeah, I totally do that. Uh, so, well, t- kind of going off the strategic thing, Jones, I, I... I, You have, like, this... I mean, probably honed from hours of, like, like really focusing on these challenges that you do all the time, but, like, whenever you, you just feel so natural in any game that we play where, like, your blocks are always good in rounds and your your like understanding of where to go in worms is very good and like understanding game mechanics very quickly is, is something that I kind of like always feel like I'm trying to catch up to, to Jones's understanding of how the thing is going to work. You 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 flatter me. This is very sweet. <laughs> yeah, you are like I kind of like I think we named Floyd the Riz Dan, and I forget what he called me. Uh, but you really are the gamer, Dan. Uh, yeah, and, such and an honor. It's yeah, which when I say it out loud sounds almost backhanded, but uh, <laughs> I really do like I do mean that as a compliment. Uh, I, I I take it as such. I you know it's it's as <laughs> as 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 much a uh, like secondhand uh uh like embarrassment the term uh, being a gamer can be it is like it's obviously i love games and they're a huge part of my life and it's one of those like i i do take pride on trying to figure out and and learn and adapt really quick i i think i do that in most aspects of life but it it it's nice hearing it yeah well it's also like you're well like one i mean like we were kind of talking about Battle of Dance, but we have to talk about persistence. Oh my God, right? Like you are, you are unmatched. <laughs> um, and there's, there is something like entertaining. And I think like a lot of people who have seen your streams and stuff will attest, like it's actually very fun watching somebody be very good at something. Uh, and you are very good at a lot of things. And like, you know, kind of in that speed runner mentality of, Oh, I want to go watch somebody be very good at this one thing. You do a lot of very different, not all well-advised challenges, but you do a lot of them and you are very good at, at, at them by the end of it in a way that I think is very uh, entertaining to watch. You too, and there's a joy in also seeing someone who's not like... It adds to, I think, the appeal and the drama of the viewing experience that like you are very good at games and figuring and like achieving difficult things but you also take on some stuff that is bonkers hard that no one can really be super great at so it's not like a sure thing it's not like watching a, a speedrunner who's been playing like the one game for 10 years and has, has it down to like perfection to where like a extremely like victory is a guarantee it's more a thing where like this is a very good person taking on something absolutely absurd and, <laughs> and you have the determination the determination that you are going to do it it might take a while and you might make yourself utterly miserable, but you are going to do it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do not have that kind of determination. Nah. I, uh, I've been trying to sleep with the CPAP machine and I'm already babying about it. <laughs> Just like me. I don't like it. I understand. Johnny Mick 8,000 electrode encounters or whatever over here. <laughs> I, I had a I had a friend um, that I used to live with who was going through that as well, and and just like out of curiosity, I was like, okay, let me see like how well you set up, and I'm like, I could not, I could not handle that. I don't know. I used to be such like a I could sleep anywhere kind of person, and I think just over the years now I'm like, I I got I got a um, um, a blindfold now because I'm like yes getting weirdly sensitive to light with sleeping, and I'm like all these little things, so I I don't. I would not be able to deal with that much stuff, especially for sleeping. Yeah. I I am a tiny baby when it comes to sleeping. <laughs> Just I need more sleep and I'm, I'm tired all the time. It's, that's that's yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Yep. You guys are both being like very flattering to me and I'm just <laughs> like my brain is, has shut off. I mean, like I, my brain has been replaced with the sound of pressure washer. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's kind of the, the goal, right? Like, this is the like abnegation game. Yes. Like, I, this was 
this game occupied a long reign in my nighttime game right before sleep slot. Yeah. You know, for a while. It's real good at it. It's very mellow and pleasant. Yeah, it's just like it, it, it is like the, the most. I did not expect to spend like an hour cleaning a house in a video game finish at like 1 a.m. and it's like time for bed and I'm like, I bet I could do one more before I go to sleep. Yeah. And it's like, no, you can't. But, you know, that's the kind of like response you have for a really good round of like a multiplayer competitive game or like, you know, the you have to end on a win type of thing It's like, no, nah, yeah. dog, we're going to we're going to go pressure wash this motorcycle. It's going to be in and out. It's going to be great. It's, <laughs> it's bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the idea of like cleaning up something you can do. I can do better. I can do this. <laughs> God, what a what a what a garbage run. <laughs> Didn't use the right soap in this part of the thing. What am I even doing with you? Oh, incredible. This is a good map. I really like this one. I have enjoyed this too. Lots of small little things. It's a variety. Yeah. I'm curious. So you you mentioned earlier playing games and being in kind of like the strategic mindset of group fun rather than victory. I'm curious, did you, like, growing up, did you have lots of experience of playing games with, like, younger siblings or parents who don't play games as much to where, like, did, did you play multiplayer games with a lot of people whom you were, like, considerably more experienced and better at the game, but you were still, like, had to, like, thread that needle of, like, try to make sure people are still having a good time so that they don't stop playing. <laughs> Not as a child. I think it was a much more recent thing, actually, when I, like... Mm. Because, so when I started working as a game designer at Watsi, they... This is the coast for people who don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. They had... Um, they had a bunch of, like, really high-level board gamers. I was never good enough to, like, do well in there, but I learned a lot of just, like, playing with them. Um, and because it was also in like the Seattle area, there was a big board gaming culture and like, yeah, hey, let's go play board games. So I would end up in groups of people playing board games that were either not as familiar with the games that, as I was. And like past a certain point, like, you know, the 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 kind of games I want to play when I'm relaxing are like, I kind of want to just roll the dice and see what happens. Yes. And part of it is like, part of it is a like well it's part of it partially an ego thing where it's like well if i try and i lose that sucks because i'm the game designer and i should know how this works but on the other hand <laughs> i'm just like i really don't want to care that much yeah and so it was kind of like finding my own fun in it which was like hey what could i do different they're <laughs> like like what is, what is a cool thing i could do and it's like well how could i like manipulate the game state so that everybody's having fun and that's and like yeah i know like i think that's more credit than what i do gives is worth but it's like you know it's it's like hey you know how do i leave open the thing for this person so that they can take it and like not being cutthroat about like like that, that was kind of the example of the rounds thing where i'm like oh no i'm looking at the score floyd is about to win it might be more fun, but I am absolutely not going to let him have gameplay. Like, like yeah, <laughs> I am going to cut through. Like, I could not control myself for rounds. <laughs> like, I don't know what a, what a like a better show might have been. Let uh, Jones get some more points on the board so we can get more more things. But I was not having it. I was like, no, I'm gonna win this. <laughs> like, <laughs> round, round rounds gets it out of me. Rounds is a uh, yeah. Rounds is a good one. But yeah, how about you, Floyd? Did you 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 have one sibling, right? Yeah, I got one younger uh, uh, sister, and so yeah, I, I definitely like I know that my learned instinct of playing to like so that everybody is having fun was definitely like a learned thing as a kid. Where I definitely had like friends my age who played games more than me and, and were better at it than me, but a lot of the time. If I'm playing a game with somebody, it's with a member of the family, and I was definitely the person who played the games most mm -hmm. uh, in my immediate family, so very few of my family members could actually put up much of a fight there, so if I was actually just playing to win, I would just kind of win big every time, and they'd just be like, I don't know, losing constantly and by a lot, 
doesn't mm-hmm. feel super fun for and like and so if I want people to keep playing games with me, then need to like try to not just obliterate people all the time. <laughs> Yeah, my brother actually ended up winning a lot of games. I'm unlocking core memories right now. Like my brother would win <laughs> a lot of the games against me, and it's like, well, like, I remember that being frustrating. I'm like, I'm the older. I should, he doesn't even have fully developed motor skills yet. Why is he? That was. Yeah, I played a lot of games with my brother. I think I think when it came to the more str- strategy ones, like card games and things, I was better. But um, I mean, like like we played a couple of fighting games together, and he he like often won those. Um, what are the games? Genre- actually, I'd love to actually hear this. Uh, from here, we'll start with Jones. What are the game genres that you feel like, or even just game franchises, whatever springs to mind, that feels like? This is my game. I like. I am good at these. Uh, if I see a new game coming out that's in this genre, I feel like there's a reason. Chances are, I'm gonna be pretty good at this and have a good time. I don't. I don't know because I feel like there's 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 outliers all over the place, and I, I like. Uh, yeah. I don't know because. Because my my instinct is to be like, oh, uh, like, I I'm I'm good at you know souls likes, but there's also been situations where I'm like, like is that is that the action adventure side of it? Because I don't like pure like action games and stuff like that, like like you know like Bayonetta and stuff like that, where it's like, hey, here's a score, yeah, um, and I, I like adventure games. Um, that's that's I, maybe adventure games is probably the, or like collectathons. Those are like, oh yeah, I you know monkey brain activate and I go <laughs> like I want to play and get good at this. Um, yeah. But even 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 like you know like Banjo Kazooie and stuff like that. Like I don't I don't I wouldn't say I'm necessarily good at it. I just enjoy playing it. You know. Yeah. Um. I think it's just like when when a when a game kind of comes around that like i i enjoy the aesthetic and i enjoy the like you know controls and replayability of it and stuff that's what kind of like pushes me to be like okay i'm gonna get good at this because i just want to play it so much versus inherently being like all platformers i am good at you know (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'm the king of platformers yeah i mean it also like weird plugged into the gaming culture enough to know that there's always somebody better out there so it's like yeah you know oh, yeah. i'm sure i'm sure jones you've seen like elden ring speed runs and you don't walk away going from that like oh yeah i'm really good at souls like it's like no you feel like you like it's like oh oh yeah it's like i, I watch people who do like hitless runs and it's like okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> i will say there was like a memory i have as a kid uh that i this just reminded me of of when Super Mario Sunshine came out. One of my buddies, he was like, "Hey Dan, can you beat this part for me?" Like he, because oh. I I was I loved Mario sixty four like mm-hmm. so so much and uh, played the heck out of it as a kid and and I just remember being that and like beating that that section in Mario Sunshine. I don't even remember what it was. I think it was like when they take the like jetpack from you for mm-hmm. a few levels. Oh yeah, um, those are classics. But it's like. You know, now nowadays it's like I know there's a million better Mario players, but I have fun with it. You know. Yeah, I kind of like because I, I play a lot of competitive games, so it's like League of Legends and Magic the Gathering, and it's like I there's pro scenes for that. Like I routinely am informed of people who are like almost certainly ten times better than I will ever possibly be at any of these games and so it's like yeah mm-hmm. I can go look up a ranked list right now yeah in fact, I can their tell names. you exactly how many people at this game are better at this game than I am <laughs> um, I don't know that, that, I mean that's also like a I mean that's kind of like a struggle for me personally it's like you know the, like how do you is there is there ever something you can really claim as your own is like oh yeah I'm the best at X and it's like I mean technically no right like yeah I, I struggle with that. There's probably sure. somebody that's best at something, but like it's not you. It's just like statistically speaking. Yeah. And like, because yeah, it's like if you if you have that humble kind of like, if you have if, if you're not willing to like ego check the 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 uh, individual like 
you know, ego check your ability to win any game you ever play. It's like, well, can't you can't like. It's hard. It's hard to build confidence in, in that, right, as, as a as a as a principle. Definitely. So. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I like I feel like one of my superpowers is like beginner's luck. It's like the first time I try something, <laughs> I'm usually pretty good at it, but like it doesn't translate to like a, a high growth curve a lot of time. Yeah. Which I like. I wonder if I like I kind of attribute that to like, oh, maybe I like I can just kind of like pick things up and see the intent. But like there's something like in the way of like mastering those systems in a way that I actually think that like Jones, you're very good at um, uh, where like you you can you can sit there and you can and learn it and understand it and walk away at like a much higher level than when you started. I, I there, there's some extent to that. I think that I I, I can do maybe I <laughs> know. I don't know. I'm not good at also highlighting my own strengths. Um, I, I guess I guess I just like to learn like how how a thing works, mm -hmm. and 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 not even like the, the aspect of like I've been watching a lot of like speed running documentaries lately, and it's like oh, like oh the rollover of the frame lets you do this jump in Mario, and like like learning that stuff seems like so far beyond me, but just like. The game rewards me for blank. I'm gonna keep trying to do blank and uh, and see see what that gets me, kind of thing. Like uh, that, I've always enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like you have like what stops me from pursuing that sort of that level of skill that you attain in a lot of these things is either just sort of a like I don't want to put in the time to try to learn that, or more often just sort of a immediate assumption of like there's no way <laughs> yeah that's that's not within my skill range and i feel like you like at least it, it seems like from here you definitely don't default to that thought nearly as quickly or easily as i would you you see a challenge type thing and you think like you and you tend to at least it seems think like i could do that i could probably do that let me learn how to do that yeah Speaking of which, when's the next little Gator game run, uh, Floyd? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, I'm tempted. So the thing is, I've I've not done much of the speed running for little Gator game recently, uh, because I got distracted. But while I was away, some new like tricks were figured out. But like one of the new tricks is one that I, that is a, uh, definitely at like a skill ceiling of like time, like input timing precision that is a little bit beyond me <laughs> mm -hmm. or it certainly feels a little beyond me uh, and it's definitely a thing that I would need to learn in order to be able to like be competitive at that one again but I'm tempted like I just enjoy being in that game and uh, moving yeah. around in it so I could see at some point feeling like alright I'll go back in and see if I can figure out the timing for that again what what is what is Floyd's uh <clears throat> genre of choice yeah of, of of extreme skill i feel like for me i feel like rhythm games games for me are the one that i will yeah like it's not that i am a master of rhythm games there are so many people who are far beyond me but rhythm game is one where like on average if a rhythm game is thrown at me i'm going to do pretty well at it to start by default mm -hmm. and uh, with practice i could get pretty good at it but like not again not best in the world good but like on like i feel like i am slightly better than average at those somewhat consistently and i and i tend to enjoy any game that has a rhythm component or aspect to it hundreds of hours in guitar hero and rock band will do that <laughs> yeah I, I, i've played those games a lot and that that's like that musical part of my brain is just not some like it's just not something that I, I ever was able to really like build up the skill for. That makes sense. I guess I should also mention hundreds of hours actually playing like real drums and like stuff like that also probably has an impact. Well, yeah, that probably helps. Yeah. Yeah. What are the genres for each of you that you feel like are absolutely not for you? 
Oh. That you were just bad at all the time without fail. Oh. Fighting games for me. Oh, there is an answer to this. Yeah, fighting games are real hard. Oh, yeah, for fighting me. games are up there for me. Yeah. Um. Hold on, I'm gonna go look up a game, a, a list of game genres because I do think there's an answer to this. I always sort of assume, Emmons, that like in any situation where we're thrown something that is more like tactical or I feel like any Battle of the Dance game we played that had like a deck building or sort of like tactics aspect to it I feel like yeah like any any strategy focused or yeah like you've got a head for strategy that I definitely do not it possibly yeah I mean it, it's like actually I think the answer is, I mean if we, if we want to get like very specific it's tax shooters it's like counter-strike like I cannot play those games oh yeah um but yeah I think fighting games or uh, fighting games, I think, are good. Analog. I mean, I'm like absolute garbage at, at RTSs as well, but at least I kind of feel like I understand them. Um, I'm also garbage at RTSs. Dude, I there was a point in my youth where I had art, like I was I was doing tournaments for StarCraft, and I, I was loving it, and then I just I stopped, and it's gone. It's like <laughs> gone. Anything, anything yeah. I had. The game, the game has moved super fast. I mean, that was like a game that was like, what if, what if we made the game more esports and harder with the second iteration? <laughs> uh, that was a wild kind of like, well, I guess we're doing like, I guess, I guess we're, you know, we've, we've made it so that only 10 people in the world can play this game now. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. We're having a great time though. We're loving it. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I wonder how much of the strategy thing is like like magic has been around for so long that like it kind of set up the basis for a lot of how strategic games are built in terms of just like synergies and a lot of the terms that you can even trace back to uh, to to the original TCG there. Yeah. And it's like, well, I've spent so much time thinking and learning about the systems. I played that game for, I mean, probably 25 years at this point um wow and it's 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 kind of that game designer part of the brain where it's like yeah okay i kind of understand like how rounds is supposed to work because of the systems in play and like you gave me this tool and by just the fact that you gave me this tool means you want me to use it with these things and so therefore like i i can just like shortcut a lot of those like intuition things it's like oh this one is they're intending me to do a linear strategy here because you know but look at all these things that are similarly named and it's just like absolute gobbledygook if you didn't <laughs> literally read every mark rosewater article for 12 years that's <laughs> like uh i don't know it, it's it's a weird bit of learned kind of like it, it's one of those few cases where it's like i have like deep knowledge about the origin of a genre that I feel like I can see where a lot of the, the math goes. And because it's actually a magic specific thing, but because Rosewater who's the <clears throat> uh, head game designer for Magic the Gathering, he writes game design articles on the Wizards, uh, on the, the Wizards of the Coast, dailymtg.com. Uh, I highly recommend them. They're they're like foundational game design kind of learnings that he just he's been writing like every week for the past God over a decade at this point. Um, Whoa, that's awesome. It, yeah, he also started having a podcast where he drives to work. He's a wild... He used to be a screenwriter for Roseanne. The guy is insane. Like, it's <laughs> wild, this guy's story. Um, anybody who is, like, interested in, in going out and getting some game design, like, who wants to read some stuff about game design, um, even if you don't play Magic, like, there are some gems in there that you could you can find out. So he, he also... Uh, just, just I'm going to go on a little Rosewater tangent here. Go for he it. writes uh, every hundred articles he writes. He writes a like 100 and counting an article title like 100 and counting 200 and counting, etc, etc, etc. That is uh, a review, a self review of all of his last hundred articles and like a with like a starring system. So you can like look at those and see like, OK, well, I'll only look at the ones he rated five stars or whatever. And I'll probably wow. throw out anyone that is like very specific to a magic set that just came out. Um, 
And so there's there's lots of stuff in there about like, you know, how does magic think about the players that it designs for and the different groups of people that play the game? And, you know, how do how do you think about the uh, strategy of like, how do you create different tools like using the, the mechanics of magic? How do you create different tools for people to experiment and, uh, you know, feel like they're 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 cracking the code and, and really able to delve deep into the strategy stuff. That's cool. Yeah, it's it's wild. It's just it's just he's just a guy that I that wrote shows for Roseanne and was really loud in the office. <laughs> also, side note, a lot of game director, a lot of like lead designers are very loud people, especially at CCG Studios. I've noticed this. Rosewater, Rosewater was very loud. Ben Brode was very loud. I think there's a connection. I think if you want to be a game director, you have to be very loud. I've definitely met, like, if I think back to past workplaces I've been in, some of the people who definitely have, like, the most loud, the voices that carry the most, have almost all been designers without fail. Yeah. Like, not every designer is loud, but <laughs> they, yeah, a lot of yeah. them. You have to be kind of. It's it's people love arguing. Like it's <laughs> it is it is a thing that people like a lot and uh Yeah, but do they really like it? <laughs> no, you know what? No, they do. It's, yeah. Um Yeah, I don't know. People, designers need to argue less. That's my that's my takeaway. It's like look at all these good points I can make. And it's like the artist that you're talking to does not care and probably hates you now. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. Boy, this is relaxing. When are we going to make a game? When are we going to make a game? I've definitely had the thought multiple times, Jones, and I don't think it's actually true, but it's a thing that just my brain has latched onto that like, you and I are going to make Elden Jiggy someday. <laughs> Because no one else is going to. <laughs> Gonna happen. Okay. Talk to me about this. I I don't. I need I need to know. It's there's barely even anything really to it. We just um we are aficionados of Banjo Kazooie and we like Souls games a lot and we were just finding a lot of weird parallels, especially when playing Banjo Tooie. We were noticing a lot of bizarre parallels with like. Souls design stuff like oh here's weird like door does not open from this side stuff here's a location that literally just feels like just like strip away the rare studio sort of like cute cartoony look of this and this this is totally a like a FromSoft level vibe uh, mostly just jokingly but then someone in comments did like write an incredible like overhaul of the script to uh, the intro cutscene to Elden Ring swapping in like just a bevy of uh, Souls references, references to our playthrough, just an incredible piece of art that uh, spun together this weird mingling of Souls and Banjo stuff that is extremely in our wheelhouse. And ever since then, I've also just started noticing other weird stuff like that in the wild of like, here's a guy who's making these incredible like miniatures based on Souls levels and he'll show them online. Here's like a collection of four of them. And one of them, until you look close, you don't realize, wait, that one's just Spiral Mountain. That's a banjo level. <laughs> I started just noticing sneakily, these. there's more common DNA between these than uh, it seems. It's, it's, it's bizarre. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it, it's, yeah, it started as nothing. Like it started as us just being <laughs> dumb. And then it like, we're like, hey, hang on. Wait Hold a on. second. Let him cook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, okay, what what would it even be? What would it be if it was a thing? Yeah, that's like on a fundamental level, would the play lean more into the collectathon uh, banjo side? Uh, or would it lean in more into the soul side? Like, would. Which side is the aesthetic pulling from more? Which side is the play pulling pulling from more? I feel like I can very easily see a someone making a banjo kazooie uh, homebrew mod thing that is like, all right, here's a bunch of kind of here's a bunch of Elden Ring locations that we have turned into banjo kazooie levels, and like we've redesigned like the gray box layout and all that to actually play well for a banjo game. But the theming is based on here's the Landell level. Here's a bunch of yeah. NPCs with like 
that are kind of from soft NPCs, but they got the big goofy rare eyes. This one speaks in rhyme. This one, like, they do come in and try to like- This one is super depressed. Assassinate you though. Yeah, yeah. So, I, so, okay. All right, you, you've- Yeah, go off. <laughs> you, we opened the can of worms. You've lit up my game designer brain. Yeah, you, you've, sorry, Pandora's box has been opened and it will not be closed for the rest of this episode. So- Good. Uh, so you need a moment, right? You need you need you need that hook. Like, what's that hook? And I think the hook is that post from the forum, right? Or from the comments, right? It, it's like, <laughs> like Mumbo the magic magician, <laughs> but like in the style of like, Dan, did you draw an Amogus? No. <laughs> I need to be looking around a little more. Clearly, there's some art and. Uh... <laughs> Some uh, very good art and writing happening around here. I don't know what you're talking about. But like, <laughs> you want you want you want like the intro of Elden Ring in the style of Banjo Kazooie, or you want the intro of Banjo Kazooie in the style of Elden Ring, right? Like that's the parody. The parody is like mm -hmm. it is Elden Ring, but cutesy, or it is Banjo Kazooie but bleak. Mm -hmm. uh, and like once you figure that out, everything else gets a lot easier because now it's all of a sudden it's very obvious. Like okay, well. What do you do with the characters? It's like, well, you have Conga, but he's he's like chained up and fixes your weapons or whatever. Uh, and he Grunty speaks in rhyme or whatever, but she also is like a slave to an elder god or whatever. Uh, that's true. So like that that's one early uh, choice that you can kind of make that might then help knock some other dominoes down for making further decisions. What tone do you go? Do you go with Souls tone or do you go with banjo tone? I feel like you go with banjo tone. Otherwise, it kind of like gets into this like very serious. Yeah. <laughs> like you go with banjo, like you take Elden Ring, like from soft, like seriousness and sadness and then filter it through banjo tone. That just kind of makes it still sort of like funny, tragic, like a uh, schadenfreude tragic. Yeah. So like the game banjo to it. <laughs> Basically, yeah. <laughs> Sad and tragic. Uh, which, so if you're like have the, if you're pulling from like the aesthetic and tone of banjo, then maybe then you go with a little bit more soulsy play. Then, like, you have to find out all right yeah, what is, is what is souls <laughs> contributing then. I I am just picturing in my mind, you know, you know that like video of um, it's like. Super Mario 64, but you have the Doom shotgun and you're fighting the uh, uh, the Abyss Watchers, and there's like the Lego Star Wars UI, like that that GIF or, or video of, of just a bunch of mod. I'm I'm now just picturing like a Souls character running around Banjo Tui levels with like no difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. That, it's kind of making me smile. So so that version, so that that's actually like. Right, like at that point, the joke is just like how many, how many uh, pieces of a game can we interpret through the other lens, right? It's like okay, well, this person has to fight a dragon to get a jiggy, right? And it's a super long, drawn out fight with a huge life bar, and they have to, like, I don't know, they have an Estus flask that's just honeycombs or like a honey pot, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, Honestly, Jones, you tapped into it a little bit, even in the middle of the two-e playthrough, when you sort of like pointed at that one little goofy four-legged dinosaur uh, and says, "Like, what if they just put this in a Monster Hunter? Change nothing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's the funniest thing to imagine. <laughs> it's just like some some of those visual like just thinking about something silly like that happening is is very fun." It like weirdly like merging them. The more you merge them together, like honestly, the less funny it becomes. Like you don't, you do kind of need to like just. It's a little bit of like the mix and match mashup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the whole little video we made of like that Elden Jiggy uh, <laughs> uh, cutscene thing. I'll link to it uh, below or somewhere if I remember it. If folks want to see it because it's just really delightful. Just having that portentous Elden Ring music and the gravitas of the script, but you're saying things like the loathsome Canary Mary and yeah. seeing a Canary Mary swinging on a thing in old N64 graphics is very funny. Yeah. <laughs> and 
I would love to play that whole game. It's like you, you need to get the darkest dungeon narrator to do it, <laughs> right? Or, or like, oh my gosh. Oh, it'd be incredible. Yeah. Anyway, like, Dan's, we're going to make this game someday. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and I, I don't know when or why, but we're going <laughs> to. <laughs> no one else no one else is gonna we need to find a fourth band who's like an engineer who can help with programming that's really what we're lacking yeah yeah applications are open <laughs> must enjoy rounds <laughs> we, we don't have many rules but you you have to meet those requirements yeah. like. <laughs> we don't ask for a lot but yeah Oh, yeah. Dan wins. Yeah. Dan wins. Right. This course is really coming together. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's honestly like, I don't know what they were doing here, but. <laughs> the, 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 there, there's something about this game of like. When when you do finally like get through the, the the gunk and it's like oh these are very bright and vibrant colors that were gone yeah uh, and you're like oh oh it, it, it becomes gross all of a sudden <laughs> oh I I get happy when I see all the colors and I'm like oh yeah there it is it's rainbows well no like definitely definitely like cleaning it feels good right but I think my brain going from like oh this place is it's a little you know it's got a little bit of mold and gunk on it it's fine and then you like see how uh, yeah. good it used to look and you realize how nasty it must have been oh uh, yeah this is biohazard <laughs> level type yeah <laughs> if you watch those TikToks of like the restoration of like the cleaning deep cleaning of like an old rug or something and see how vibrant it gets and then yeah. you, get, you watch it long enough for it to loop and see where it started again it's like oh my god that was I did not appreciate how awful that was before what happened yeah I do. I man, I've been watching um, like restoration videos of like old like like antique machinery stuff. Like, yes. oh, here's a here's a candy press from 1860. Yes, I love that stuff. And they take apart, and I'm like, oh yes, take everything apart and <laughs> sandblast it. Yeah, I get it. That's what I want to see. It's amazing. It feels so satisfying. I saw what you did there, Floyd. I just, like caught myself. I was like, wait, stop. <laughs> it's OK. Saved it. Mostly. Mostly. We'll clean the Dan wins last. That can be our. Yeah. Our sign off. I like that plan. The piece to send it off on. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. <sighs> oh. <sighs> so soothing and just playing rounds was just like a man I want to this was this idea is so simple and it's so perfect and I just want to like make something that good yeah I uh, a group of friends recently had like a little game jam um, and I was like really getting the itch to like load up the dough again and, and just play around and try to make something um it just happened to be at a bad time when I had to do some crunch. So I didn't get to, but I was like, oh man, I, I really want to get back. Because even just messing around and like following a few tutorials was really fun. Of like, I made a thing, look. It's really cool feeling like making games is frustrating as heck, but like mm -hmm. actually getting a thing put together and like seeing it actually like having a part of a game sort of work that you made yourself is like kind of intoxicating <laughs> like yep. it's right it's really cool there's something really interesting like so like when i started out as an animator it was like animating in film didn't really get into games for several years and i love both but they are different like there's a very different like experience of seeing your work in the end result mm -hmm. like with film i look at the shot that i worked on and i see the animation in it and like and it's been all like uh lit and rendered and it looks beautiful now way more beautiful than when i was working on it but like i 
I see the character performances in there and they're exactly as I planned for them to be. Like I painstakingly made them work exactly that way so that that character does exactly that thing and it plays out like that every time. And that like, there's a satisfaction in that. What I didn't expect getting into games was like in making lots of little individual pieces of what a character can do on their own, but, but in a way where they could kind of stitch together in their own way. And then you see like a little character like a little NPC or a little monster or something in the world, just kind of wandering around, playing all the animations that you made, but not in any order that you dictated, just kind of on their own. Like they have their own life to them. Mm -hmm. You feel like you sort of like created a bunch of things that they are capable of. You played God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in a weird sort of way. And it's like very satisfying in its own sort of way of just seeing like this little, uh, thing that has kind of like its own life to it yeah yeah animations are one of those things that just make everything feel there, there's like certain stages it's when i was making champions on league of like when it felt more real and like step one was when you got that first piece of concept art yeah You're like oh yeah that's it that's that's what this is, this character is gonna be it's like this mess of mechanics now has a, has a face and a name and it looks so <laughs> rad yeah. And then the, the the second was when it had all the animations in it and like the character was moving and they like blended nicely between moving and attacking and all the personality that was in there. It's just man, art is good. It really is. I feel bad sometimes for like my coworkers from other disciplines in games who have just as critical and important if not more important a job but it is not nearly as easy to show off to others the work you have done <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it is very easy to say here's the animation i made look at it <laughs> like i feel bad for like we need the programmers and engineers for the thing to literally work and for any of our other stuff to actually work in game but like when they do their job right like the game exists and works <laughs> which is cool it's better than what, what we had before <laughs> harder to show off it feels like though yeah What else are you playing lately? When not Dan battling? Uh, hmm. I'm playing Dark and Darker. Yeah. That, that is... Okay, I work on League of Legends. That game is one of the most hostile games to new players that I've ever played in my life. <laughs> like... Oh, God, it's... And but it, I mean, like it has the it has the bones. It's like, OK, well, but once you get 20 hours in, it's real good is very true. But I it did take 20 hours of dying a lot uh, before we got there. <laughs> I gotcha. So you do say that and I I am like, yeah, like, yeah, like give me that. this is why you're gamer, Dan. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a part of me that wants that. Yeah, if if you're okay calling calling something BS and be like that was whatever, and then just like, but you can just you know just queue back up. It's if you got if you can handle that loop, you're you're good. Yeah, so look, uh, just look at like most games I play. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like, <laughs> uh, I didn't want to say it, but yeah, now you uh, you have a type I'm a glutton for punishment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Jones, you just finished a Elden Ring challenge run, challenge run at time of recording. And we're pretty far ahead here. So for y'all at home watching this, this is going to be like months ago. But go watch the VODs on because I'm Dan Jones uh, stream archive. Yeah, on YouTube. you should go Ooh. watch it. He did a challenge run of Elden Ring where like bosses and enemies, too, I assume, are all randomized everywhere. And he had to change to a new weapon every time he beat a boss. Yeah, yeah. So I, I just I did full enemy. In item randomizer, which I've, I've done multiple of those of Elden Ring at this point, um, but I wanted to force myself to use weapons that I, I you know, 
there, every every Souls game has like those weapons that you're like, this is my comfy weapon, and I know it, and I love it, and it's good. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to force myself out of that comfort zone. Um, and uh, learned a bunch of new weapons. And anytime I killed a boss, which uh, you know, I didn't kill every boss in that playthrough, but it's a lot. There's of there's like 165 bosses in the game, so there's is a it lot. That many? Jeez. There's a few. Yeah. Um, and only half of them are like Erd Tree Guardians. <laughs> and uh, every time I killed one, I had to delete my weapon that I used. So did, did you, what was your were you doing something for, to like... Okay, yeah. you first. I was going to say, what was your strategy for upgrading them? Did you just skip all the upgrades or did you only do it when you had to? That was my question too. Um, so <laughs> like for the beginning of the game with most early bosses, so like going through Stormvale and most of everything in Limgrave and then even like because... It, it was a boss randomizer. Like I would go into a fight, but without like deciding what weapon I wanted to do. And mm -hmm. if it was like, oh, it's a it's a boss I know and I can handle, I'll use a non upgraded thing so I can save, you know, my my runes and, and not upgrade it. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, the thing was, I had the 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 bell bearings that let you buy smithing stones and stuff mm -hmm. like that randomized. Um, so I had just had to find those. And once I, I found a good chunk of them towards the end game, so like instead of like banking on my runes for leveling i would be like okay i'm gonna prepare five weapons because i know i have five kills i have to do so i'm gonna get five up to like you know at least like plus eight or whatever uh so i'm like at least doing decent damage to them uh and that, that was that was pretty much the the strat some of them i was definitely like oh i wish i could upgrade this more because these fights are not fun but <laughs> <laughs> It was a good time. What was the most surprising weapon that you enjoyed? You're like, wow, I didn't even think that would be as fun as it was. Um, oh, that's a good question. There was this, uh, I always hate rapiers in uh, Souls games because they, they have a weird like hitbox, especially for like R1s and stuff like that. And jumping attacks don't really feel super satisfying with them. Yep. Um, but there were a few I used just because I was getting good um, like somber weapons the like special unique weapons for them mm -hmm. um and had this one that when you did the art the the weapon art for it you like turn into a cloud and you could <laughs> float around for like a second or two and Whoa. then do this like big thunder attack and i'm like this is so i never would have used this ever and it was <laughs> super fun that's awesome excellent i think it's the weapon you get from like placidus axe i want to say i'm not positive on that though at time of recording this, we are not yet blessed with Elden Ring DLC, so I'll I'll go ahead and ask because I'm tell curious. Tell us how much you like it in the comments. Yeah, please. <laughs> Make fun of us for not having it yet. <laughs> what build uh, do you two have in mind for that first run going in? Um, so I, I prepped the file, and I, I, I do have everything like ready for it i i'm going in with dual great spears just because that's what i was using on the playthrough but i know the second i get one of the new things i'm gonna just re respec and play with that because there's too many fun new weapon categories yeah yeah i mine is more a matter of convenience like i i, I i've been playing a new one with like beasts incantations that i that i was excited about doing and, and some kind of like either dagger or claw or whatever like beast focused things I could manage to make work but I don't know that I'm actually gonna be able to get far enough in that file before it comes out so I might just revert to my old uh, original playthrough which is a, a sorcery build like 70 int build mm -hmm. um, and play that way so we'll see How about what you? Do you? What are you thinking yeah. for? Yeah. Okay, I can't put this on us and not not not. <laughs> yeah. Be. You answer the question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for my uh, original recorded run, it's kind of the side quest run, that ended up being a pretty uh, kind of like strength and faith build, is sort of like what it ended up uh, like settling into, which I enjoyed a lot because there's just endless fun faith options for the first time in Souls history, and so like. Dragon Breath stuff was great, silly mm -hmm. nonsense fun. I feel like I want to stick with that general build, but uh, I might start t 
tinkering around with other faith toy options a little bit more just for variety. I don't, I don't know. I, I expect it's going to be similar to Jones that like whatever build plan I have is not going to survive contact with the enemy's weapons they drop because mm -hmm. uh, I'll yeah. immediately want to start tinkering with something. It's like it's not even new new weapons. It's like new weapon categories. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's wild. Very fun. And new weapon arts and new, like, all kinds of things that are so much easier to, like, customize and tinker with now in Elden Ring, which I love. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely consuming my my, my thoughts. Yeah. Even in this moment. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> The play friends are all probably talking about the the sick new great spear or whatever that's like broken and like oh, wow yeah, I can't like... believe these guys didn't even talk about that. <laughs> we will be soon, don't worry. Or I guess by the time you're seeing this, my playthrough of DLC, there's gonna be some weird chronology for people watching these episodes as they come out in order. I'm sure my DLC playthrough all of us started airing by now. It's us from the past. Hello, play Whoa. friends. <laughs> we are just, we don't know the future. Yeah, we got way ahead on recording these somehow. Be sure to comment on this video what the lottery <laughs> numbers are. Yeah. So we can go back in time and look at these comments when we're recording it and become rich. Yeah. Brilliant. How it works, right? And then we can make Elden Jiggy. Oh, finally. Finally. That's it. Funded, greenlit, ready to go. That's the piece we're missing. The jiggy we're missing. I don't know if it's the jiggy we deserve, but it is the jiggy we need. Is the villain of Elden Jiggy a from softy villain, or are we like it's grunty? It's going with a grunty. Yeah, let's not let's not get ourselves. There's been there's never been a better villain in any game ever than grunty. Yeah. She who lives in death. Why would you even ask this question? She's already a skeleton, too. Like, she's... Yeah. Yeah, she's perfect. Brent. She's perfect. She's ready. She knew. Yep. This was the role she was born to play. I would be so happy if some... canon from Soft Souls character spoke in rhyme. I know, right? We need more rhyming villains. It's true. Like, I want someone, someone get a mod of Elden Ring that just makes Gideon rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> I would be so much happier to go see him. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, okay, you're, the, I'm, I'm enjoying this character again. <laughs> So I could laugh off the assassination attempt, even. It's just like, all right, go oh, you. Disowning a daughter. Ah, you kidder. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you apologized about that whole any nonsense in rhyme, I'd instant forgiveness. Yeah. yeah. Can't stay mad at you. I very much apologize for the slaughter and also for the disowning of my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Thank you. <sighs> trying to find any spots that aren't the Dan wins that remain. We've we're in the home stretch here. Yeah, we're this is a this port has got some rust on it. You gotta get real in there. Oh, did we miss something? Oh yeah, clearly. Thought that's just how it looked. Some of them, like, because we don't have higher powered uh, nozzles, you have to use the, like, the, the red on it. Oh, I see. Or the rust. Mm. Fourth floor flag. Oh, got something on it. There we go. Yeah, also, if you hit, well, it's start on the controller, but you can see a list of things that are clean and not clean. Oh, that's nice too. I am very glad that we've made another Battle of the Dens happen here. Me too. These are some of my favorite things to do. I agree. Always a good time. Yeah. 
I'm glad it worked out doing it remote as well. It's our first time attempting to do it remotely. And uh, though I do definitely prefer doing these in person with y'all just for the fun of hanging out, I am glad I've enjoyed this immensely and it's been lovely to be able to uh, do this despite not being able to be in person for it. Agree. Yeah. I, I will defeat all of you in hand-to-hand -hand combat next time I see you, though. <laughs> I expect nothing less. Where is these stupid wind blades? Gotta clean this little stragglers. Oh, there we go. There we go. Hey, nice. I feel like those are some things I probably left. <laughs> Come on. Might be my imagination, but I keep feeling like I'm seeing little tiny smudges. It's bad, obviously, but... Courtyard archery targets. Courtyard. Bunch of little ones of those around here. Yeah, if you hover over them, you can see the cleanliness in the upper left hand corner. Oh, there's like little, it's the edges, like the outer edges, yeah. I think, on a lot of them. That's how they get you. Yeah. There we go. A lot of fence panels. This wall has a speck of dirt left. <laughs> Where are you? This is more intensely focused than any of us have been for any of the rest of these games. Mm -hmm. It's true. Started out chill, but this is crunch time. Yeah. This is where the fun stops. <laughs> Ah, we got it. Look at this good, clean mini golf. Dummies, fence posts, and fifth pole border. Hmm. Still something dirty about this. What? <laughs> Hmm. What should so what? I feel like we should ask the play friends something about like their assessment of the Battle of the Dance or like what do they want to see next time? Ooh. Like what what are what are the curiosities? Are there like do we need game recommendations? Are we running out of games? I'm down for that. I feel like we must be running out of games, but like <laughs> we we keep finding more. Sometimes we find wizard jumper or whatever black maws we found. Yeah, I can't even remember how that one came, like how I came across that one. No, I think they like sent me a code for that one. Uh, the devs did uh, a oh. while back, and I filed it away in my head as like, this seems like this could work for a battle of the dance eventually, and it did, and it did very well. Yeah, thanks y'all for sending that. I think I did well on that game, so thank you, Black Moss devs, for, uh, <laughs> for that one. You did do well on that one. You're in your element. Mm hmm. Yeah, wizardry. Yeah. Post Truly a wizard's game. Yeah. <laughs> so pretty but yeah yeah i would love to hear recommendations or what y'all would like to see in future dan battles because <laughs> like it's not like we can't go back to other games we've had plenty of returning games in the past it's not like we're going to stop playing rounds but uh mm -hmm. yeah i would 
love to hear y'all's thoughts because I'm sure there are some good ideas we have not thought of yet. And really just any excuse to play games with these goofs. Mm -hmm. Overhangs. Cave coins. The cave coins? I thought I finished those. Cave coins? Yeah, cave coins. Classic cave coin situation. Yeah. It's these little pizzas over here. <laughs> Second whole houses, eight whole shields. Oh, I see the shield. This. What's the button on PC for seeing the uh, list? Uh, if you go to escape and then um, on the details, like it's overview details messages, go to details and then on the right status, you can sort it by clean stuff. Oh, I see. I see. Oh, I see. you can sort it. That's good. Castle keep basement wall. That's the one we're leaving. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Second whole houses, eighth whole shields. Yep. Okay. Hmm. Oh, yeah. It's got to be these. Yep. There you are. Yep, 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 yep. Little bits and bobs I missed before. Uh -huh, uh -huh, what, uh -huh. what is it on you that is not clean? Mm -mm. There we are. Okay, now we got the to-do final list. Castle, Castle keep, keep overhang. Overhang. Forest stepping stones. Got that. Wait, look at this happy little snake. There's a good snake right here. I like that snake a lot. Very good snake. Yeah. Lots of character. What are the like what are the castle keep overhangs here? Let's that's the that's the like big oh. sections that's kinda connected. I think I got it right here. It's something there it is. Okay. There it is. That's it. It's it's right. time for Dan wins. It's time for Dan wins. It's good work, Dan's. Thanks for joining me for all these good games. This has been a delight of a time. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. We will do it again. Anytime. It's a it's been a pleasure to Dan with you all. Yeah. Agreed. Always love a nice battle to dance. Yep. Until next battle, everyone. Dan wins. Dan wins. Let's clean it. <laughs> it must be cleaned. It must be clean, or we do not truly win. It's true. Alright. Oh god, it's not here. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Maybe there's like some little specks up top. To yeah, know. there's a little speck somewhere. Mm. Are you hiding? Well, this is anticlimactic. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Uh, we can save it. Just uh, give it a sec. We'll find it. Um up top somewhere you'd think hey are you hiding where is it huh dan's win don't win till it's clean um huh it is the hunt Pixel hunting now. Well, this is a doozy. First request for Battle of the Dance. Don't play Power Wash Simulator. Again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I bet it, you know what I bet it is? Huh. I bet you it's like one of these little like overhang sections where where we'd be spraying up but but you know like oh yeah i see what you mean oh you might be right okay yeah 
now let's try this angle. See if it. Uh... Yay! Hey! We Yay! did. It. Dan's do actually win though. Yay! Dan's win. Dan's win. Dan's win. See you all next time. Bye. 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 Bye.